Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. This is Jackson No with No Finance, bringing you the most up to date news and insights into the small business financing world. If you're a small business owner, you've come to the right place. Today is October 8th, and we've got some important updates to cover today. Yesterday, we discussed the positive September jobs report and tax relief for hurricane Helene victims. We also touched on the challenges faced by small business owners who took out the economic injury disaster loan during COVID. Today, we'll build on that and dive into two more pressing topics. The diminishing disaster relief fund set aside for small businesses and updates on the Rural Energy for America program, also known as REAP. First up, let's look at the current situation with the disaster relief funds designated for the damages incurred by Hurricane Helene, as reported by CBS News. What happens when the financial lifeline meant to support small businesses and disaster areas is about to run dry? As of now, only $1.6 billion were made in the Small Business Administration's disaster relief funds. And it's predicted that this funding could be depleted in just a few weeks unless Congress intervenes. With the recent damages done by Hurricane Helene, there's been over 3,000 applications coming in every single day. Many small business owners believe that disaster relief funds are always secure, but as we can see here, that's not the case. White House representatives have emphasized the urgency of this funding shortfall, requesting Congress to act quickly, preventing businesses from being left without support. Florida Representative Jared Moskowitz is introducing an emergency bill to address this need. And there are calls for Congress to reconvene sooner than what is scheduled after the election in November. How do we think these small business owners that have their businesses located in Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, Alabama, all these places that were hard hit, South Carolina, how do we think these small business owners feel who their livelihoods are their small business? How do we think that they feel when their businesses have been completely flattened, destroyed, their business may never get off the ground again, especially when their government, who they rely on for when these disasters happen, don't have the funds to relieve them to get their business back on the ground. You know, it's $1.6 billion that they have in their funds, in their coffers. When we send, say, $175 billion to Ukraine, I don't think that they feel very happy about this. And uh, there's also another hurricane coming tomorrow. So God bless everybody in the past. I hope you are safe and no one gets hurt. But it was another possibly Category 5 hurricane coming. I'm sure that uh, small business owners whose livelihoods are connected to their business are pretty pissed right now. With that said, there is still $1.6 billion in those coffers. Hopefully Congress reconvenes and gets more funds sooner than later. But what I would do, I would contact FEMA and SBA right away to see if you qualify for that assistance and uh, relief funds and uh, hopefully you can get your business back up and running as soon as possible. Now, let's turn our attention and focus to the Rural Energy for America program, also called REAP. As more federal dollars are flowing into these renewable energy projects, how can small business owners like yourself benefit from these developments? In 2023, we awarded $104 million to 302 participating businesses, and it's broken down as $49 million in loans and $55 million in grant money. They just announced that they're rolling out another $100 million for next year in grants and loan monies to rural businesses looking to invest into energy efficiency and renewable energy projects. While some question the necessity of this federal funding, others believe it has the potential to create significant positive impact in rural communities. Is this truly the best use of federal tax dollars, or could these funds be better allocated elsewhere? I'm specifically going to go over the grants awarded to Kentucky businesses, since that's where I live. Small business owners, you all tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section about this program. So nine Kentucky businesses were awarded a total of $1.7 million in grants. Most of these businesses were awarded the grant money to install solar panels, switching to clean energy, and also saving them thousands, if not tens of thousands of dollars each year on their energy bills. In total, the $1.7 million in grant money, aka your tax dollars, save these businesses approximately $112,500 annually. That's the equivalent of paying for the energy bill of 94 homes a year. And it will take roughly 14 years for that great investment to pay off. One of these grants in particular was awarded to a lumber manufacturer and reseller of $391,000 to invest into energy efficient equipment and machinery. But that new energy efficient equipment and machinery is only estimated to save $3,488 annually. So doing the math there, it'll take about 112 years for the grants to recoup its investment. So what you're basically telling me is, is this business just got a grant of $391,000 to buy energy efficient 
machinery and equipment. Really, they just got a brand new equipment for free and it's coming from our tax dollars and it's going to take 112 years to recoup its investment. I don't know. You tell me what you think. And I've got one more for you. A laundromat just got brand new energy efficient washers and dryers totaling to $183,000. That was the grant. At least it's saving them $2,855 a year. That's equivalent to two homes. What a deal for this guy. This laundromat business just got brand new washers and dryers for free. And I, you can't blame the business owner here. I would be doing the same thing, but come on. Is this really what the intended use of these funds was for? Oh, and by the way, at least this project will only take 64 years to recoup its investment. To be fair, you could argue that the seven other businesses that receive this money you know, they installed solar panels, so it was the intended use of this program. And the argument for the grant money to give to these small businesses not only provides clean energy, but also proves the cash flow of these businesses, saving their money on their energy bills every single month, that they can then spend on growing their businesses, making new hires, growing their local communities, economy, etc. But do we think that $1.7 million spent in the state of Kentucky to implement solar panels and buy new equipment and machinery for free, is that really the best use of these funds? We'd love to hear your all's thoughts and comments in the comment section below for both sides of the argument. So stay tuned because I will continue to keep breaking down how these federal dollars are getting spent in other states. Thank you for joining me today. We've covered a lot of important topics, especially with the urgent funding needs of small business relief after the damage is done by Hurricane Helene. And secondly, some of the questionable decision-making on where the funds are going and being spent on with the Rural Energy for America program. So I hope you all found this interesting and you know, would love again to hear your all's comments one way or the other about these issues going on today. If you found this information useful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel for more updates and we'll see you in the next video.